Hey cool players, welcome to the first full dosage of news and entertainment here on Cool Playing TV. Hit the credits. Oh. We ready to go? Yes, thank you. Okay, cool. <clears throat> Okay, well, how are we going to start this week's show? Did you just see that? Did you just see what I just did? Power of the click. Check this. Oh my god! Tell me you just saw that. Nobody believes me when I tell them I can do that. I can do the rest of the show in this shirt. But I won't. Good. So anyways, first show we've got a very special guest on Cool Playing TV. That's right, a special guest here on Cool Playing TV. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Cracker on the show. Do you remember Cracker? He used to be a 19... Robbie Coltrane, not Hagrid, he was like a detective, and he would go around solving heinous crimes. It's a bit like House, but a bit better. So we'll go straight to that section now. Basically, if you don't know what happened on coldplay.com a few weeks ago, on Chris's Christmas press release, on the 24th of November on coreplay.com uh, next to some scribbled out text there was some small tiny teeny tiny letters and we couldn't really understand what they meant a lot of people were deliberating over whether they were track titles whether it was an acronym it meant something turns out it was none of those things that what it was is it was just the letters of the first initials of their wives and their children and that's a nice little throwback because that says a lot about the band and, and who they are as people and that reminds me of the time when they were on tour and, and their rider was like Walker's Crisps and Postcards because you know it was nice so literally what was going to take us weeks took Cracker five minutes I'm kidding of course it was ReeseyBoy42 on CoolPlaying.com there's your shout out he started the thread and then figured it out himself, kind of contradicted himself. It goes along with the letters that were in the booklet of the Viva La Vida handbook. So it was brilliant. Thanks very much for the help of the guys who did sort it out and posted it in the thread and brought that to light because I know that there were some people who were interested or who didn't know what they meant. And if you didn't know what they meant, or you didn't even know that this existed, then your head must be exploding right now because this was hot gossip. But anyways, after that, we caught up with Cracker just to see what he had to say about it. And I've got to be honest. You know, when they first cancelled that show, I thought Cracker should have had another season. But upon reflection, you know, when we spoke to him, I think he might have lost the plot a little bit. Because he went on. After he cracked that, he wanted more. He he had a sniff for it, you know, he had a sniff for the blood. He wanted to he wanted to crack more mysteries. Mysteries that weren't even mysteries. And this is what he had to say. After a couple of hours, we'll maybe know his date of birth and what colour underpants he wears. All I'm saying is Crack is cracked. So that's Cracker, ladies and gentlemen, special guest in the studio today. See you later, Cracker. He's gone. He's uh, filming Harry Potter. No. Dumbledore called. He had to go. And with that, we move on to our next section of news, which first up is Will Love. Yes, this section is what it says on the tin. It's love for Will, Will Love, the champion of champions. And this week in Will Love, Will was appearing on Zane Loam with Chris. I don't know if you saw or if you heard the interview, if you downloaded it or if you just listened or you streamed it on the BBC website, you can do that. Links in the doobly-doo down below. And anyways, it was quite a vague interview in terms of news that they released on LP5. A few people thought we were going to get a bit of a revelation about an album name or a release or <coughs> Glastonbury, <coughs> Glastonbury, but we didn't get that. It was it was a bit of a pointless interview in terms of news on LP5. And this is what Will had to say. This is our highlight of the week. There's a phrase which... My wife told me, which is a, from a book, uh, I can't remember which book it is, but um, a man is asked, uh, he's asked, are you married? And, and he says, of course I'm married, I have a wife, kids, the whole catastrophe. <laughs> and which and the catastrophe just means something big and seismic and, and out of control, not necessarily bad. I think it's lovely because it's all about embracing everything, the whole thing, you know, the good and the bad and, and appreciating that it's all part of life. And that was relating to the release of LP5. It's quite a vague answer, but it could mean closeness of family and friends and the way that they, they've spoke about this album is that they're going to play it more stripped down. Less piano and more guitar, which is good for the Buckland. Just pointed at a builder. Seriously, there are builders out there. With like different coloured coats. 
It's crazy. So there you have it, that's your Will Love for the week. We'll have more Will Love on Cool Playing TV if and when it happens. If you've met Will, or you have a story with Will, or he's just your favourite member, or you've got something interesting to tell us, then get in touch. Links are in the bar below. Tell Cool Playing TV about your experiences, and your story might make it on to a new segment that we're making. Next up and right now on Cool Playing TV is The Bookland. <laughs> Not a lot of news in this section this week, we just wanted to get it off the ground and introduce it to you guys. A couple of weeks ago after the Newcastle Hidden Show, at the backstage party, a gentleman called Simon proposed to his girlfriend Ruth. We've been speaking with Simon, corresponding with him, asking him about his experience with the band, and he told us that afterwards at the after show party, Johnny was very forthcoming in talking about the release of LP5. Although we wouldn't talk about our release date or give any substantial information, about any of the content that he was very openly happy to talk about LP5 being finished which was big news in the cool player community because we've been waiting a very long time for this more anything to do with it and so now we believe that the album is finished recording which is good news they finished recording the album they should be mixing it right about now then they've got to rehearse to play the shows live and if you were to believe the rumours going around that the band will be playing Glastonbury this year then we could be seeing a release sooner rather than later. Of course, I know what you're all thinking. Where's the Chrissy Love? Where's the Chrissy Love? We've got Chrissy Love right here in Global and TV, right after this commercial break. What do you mean we don't have commercial breaks? The hell is YouTube? I can't work in this environment. Who's writing this? Who is writing this material? Boing. This is a joke. This is a joke. I'm Ron Burgundy. Welcome to Chrissy Love. This week, everybody's favourite neurotic frontman has been talking. Chris and Will appeared on Zane Lowe's breakfast show on Radio 1 on the 7th of January. Happy birthday to me. Can you leave some happy birthday comments? Want to leave some happy birthday comments down below? That would be nice. It was my birthday. Though the interview was advertised as a talk through the fifth album, it was a bit less informative than we'd have liked and included a long discussion about the merits of porridge? Am I reading that right? I have a teleprompter right there. It's not a teleprompter. If I could afford a teleprompter. Oh, you, you don't think I'd have a teleprompter if I could afford a teleprompter? I'd have it. Where is the camera? I'd have a teleprompter if I could afford one. Anyway, in true Coldplay fashion, there's been almost next to nothing in the form of news for LP5. But Chris did have this to say to Zane about the release and what the album was about. Well, it's just got everything we can think of. It's about many things now. I, I read somewhere that you've come out and said that it's a concert record. That, that was well, just not, I don't know who, I, I can't remember who I was talking to, mm. but I, I didn't really mean, I don't really know. <laughs> it started already, it's, Will. <laughs> the Chris no, Martin. Well, no, the, the point is, it's, it's, got every, it's about love and addiction and uh, mm. OCD and uh, escape and working for someone you don't like. It's, it's about lots of things. But it, yeah, I guess it's all tied together by something, but basically a thinly veiled account of what happens within the group, <laughs> but, but with hopefully a bit more poetry. Yeah. I feel like we need some more light in here. Oh, oh! Oh, much better. It was a typical interview in terms of Coldplay and the information that they let out. Some people thought that because Will was going to be there, maybe we'd hear more definitive facts about the album. Chris has a tendency to waffle on, and Will has the notoriety to just go straight to the point. Also, in the January 15th issue of NME, which you can get right now online or in your nearest newsagent, Chris revealed that the band have finalised 12 tracks for the album. They've whittled down from however many tracks that they'd written or that they thought were good enough to be on the album, and they've brought it down to 12, which I think is probably a good number for an album. But wait, there's more. Chris released two song titles in the interview. He was talking about his favourite, it's Every Teardrop is a Waterfall. He said that's his favourite song title of the album. He then went on to talk about Princess of China, maybe a song title that should be disregarded, thrown in the bin, set on fire and forgotten about forever. But also Hurts Like Heaven is a song title. Up With The Birds, I quite like Up With The Birds. Princess of China just makes me think of Aladdin. Make of that what you will. Lastly in guy news, who's that guy? I just made that up. That is terrible. I am so sorry. 
A Captain Kirk of the Cool Playing Forum bumped into Guy on a flight from London to Oslo. It's thought he was going to meet up with his bandmates from his side project, which I won't say because I will inevitably pronounce it wrong and be bombarded with hate mail. Moving along. That is your member news for the week. More on those sections next Saturday here on Cool Playing TV. Keep an eye out for that. And again, just a plug, don't forget to subscribe. We're going to have a show next Wednesday. So if you're interested in news and rumours and gossip, get involved on Wednesday's shows. We're inviting people to Skype in. It's totally free if you have it. Talk about the news that matters to you. So if you are interested in appearing on next Wednesday's Rumour Mill show, then get in touch. Get in touch in the comments below and I will get back to you personally on your YouTube account or on Coolplay and get in touch with me. My username is just below me here. Sincere thanks for coming by and watching this, the first full news and entertainment show on Coolplay and TV. We hope, like I said, to make it bigger and to make it better. Feel free to go and leave some feedback in the thread on coldplaying.com now. I will put the links below so you can find everything that you need to there. Also, please take a moment to go and have a look at the thanks and just appreciate the people who are letting us do this because they're all great. It's a warm and sincere goodbye here from Coldplaying TV from the first week. We'll see you next Saturday for news and entertainments and we will see you on Wednesday for the rumour mail. Fans calling in on Skype, talking about news and rumours. Don't forget to drop by, don't forget to subscribe, don't forget to leave comments go see all the links below from everybody here at cool playing tv we'll be doing our best and we'll see you soon Who's writing this shit?